In this, my very first interview with internationally acclaimed prison artist, Sean Hawkins. Sean tells us how after 18 years of living that daily hell of being on death row, under the age of 40, a fellow prisoner unexpectedly offered him a battered, old, well-used watercolour set with just enough paint in it to make a painting. He started painting. It brought him huge emotional freedom and relief. Sean is now 54. I'll let him tell you the rest. My first encounter, my first real encounter with actually painting something was when a friend of mine who uh, is an artist himself had an old watercolor set that he was throwing away. And I happened to be present at the time. And, you know, something inside me was curious about it. And so I asked him to let me to let me have it instead of throwing it away. So he gave it to me. He gave me a brush and some paper to, to paint on. And that was the beginning of my journey with painting. And my very first painting was a bit ambitious because it was of Jamie Foxx. He was in a car, old, an old school car, a 60s type of car, and he had his a convertible, and he had his arm out the window, you know, on some really cool, not cool pose type of um, set, and I painted it. It came out pretty good for my first time, so, and I, you know, I fell in love with it ever since. Yeah, that was my very first, yeah. And to this day, I don't know where that painting is. I think I gave it to my attorney back then because we were going through my clemency at the time. And uh, he wanted some artwork from me. And I think I gave him that uh, along with some other stuff. So, yeah, that was my very first time. And I rather enjoyed it. (laughs) I really did. (laughs) One, because it turned out really well, the painting. And two, I've always had an interest in art, drawing, mostly. And like I said, my friend was an artist already, and I really liked, you know, the work that he did. So it was just, I think, natural for me to want to pursue painting. You know, now that I actually had, you know, paints in my hand, the interest and curiosity of it, it made me want to just be creative and have some fun with it. That's what I did. And once I got a taste of the watercolor, I moved over to, in a very short span of time, moved on to oils. And once again, he had some old oil paints that he had. (laughs) He happened to be painting something at the time. So my curiosity led me to want to try oils. I didn't have everything you needed to paint with oils because you have to have certain mediums to use with the oils. But that didn't stop me from from trying you know, that medium, that oil medium. And I liked it because it was more, um, it was easy to blend. And I I had a thing with, like, blending my colors. And I liked it even more than the watercolor. I took to it. And, you know, I I still used watercolor at the time, but I, um, I really enjoyed oils much, much more. That all sounds really great, Sean. When you first started painting, Sean, some 40 years ago now, where exactly would you say your inspiration came from? I think inspiration came from just having a need to be creative. I was, you have to remember, I was in a space where, a very negative space. So I think there was just something natural for me to want to be creative and you know and since I've always enjoyed art mostly in the form of drawing as a kid you know this new expression if you will was available to me so I naturally gravitated toward it and you know gave myself to it and I haven't looked back since you know, so the inspiration was really born out of just being in a negative space and 
having a need to be ex- creatively expressive. So, yeah. Your paintings, Sean, show what I feel is really amazing talent. And I was wondering whether you had art classes in the prison and a specific teacher who you felt was a real, whoa, <laughs> teacher. I have, I've always had artist friends around me who would show me different, you know, techniques and um, ways of doing things. But I've never been to, you know, like art school or formally trained. It's always been learning on my own terms you will. Even to this day, you know, I learn from reading art magazines, books, instructional books, friends, artist friends. Yeah, and just observing, you know. Yeah. Yep. I hope to someday go to like workshops, you know, add to what I've been able to learn on my own and um, just expand my, my skill. So hopefully one day I'll be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I hate to say that I am self-taught because I've always um, had the assistance of, you know, these articles, reading my friends, teaching me and helping me along the way. So I don't like to, like, take all the credit for being where I'm at today artistically, you know. So so the term self-taught is, is, is used. I, I like to say part of it is self-taught yeah but i've always had help along the way in some form or fashion yeah it's been a while with all that artistic input over several years how would you say your painting style has changed since that first jamie fox or you know has it changed at all uh yeah tremendously uh yeah <laughs> the very first uh jamie fox painting till now it's like night and day because there's just so much to learn about not just art but being an artist you know what that means what that entails which is so much more than just picking up a paintbrush and splashing paint on a canvas it's an eternal thing it's a spiritual thing it's an emotional thing it's a psychological thing and i think all these things you find yourself growing and developing while at the same time becoming an artist, you know? I think all these things make you an artist along the way. So my progression and my development and my transition from being a novice to like a real artist has been tremendous over the years. It's not something that you can like pinpoint like where you've grown, but it's been such a subtle progression and transformation. But yeah, when I look back, I can I can kind of I can kind of see the times where I've learned something and I've overcome a hurdle that allowed me to become a better a better painter. And I can look back and see where the challenges of being an artist has allowed me to transform uh, from just a painter to an artist, you know, because I think there's a difference, you know. One is technical, and I think the other is more, it's more maturity, you know, as, as an artist. You think about yourself as an artist differently. I, I think of myself differently as an artist than I did back when I first started, you know, um, because I understand it more. I understand what it means to, you know, just put paint on a canvas and to know the impact and the power of art, you know. So the transformation and the, the, the growth has been tremendous over the years. With all of this input and inspiration that you've been talking about, how do you reckon you are now artistically? Have you plateaued out? You know, have you reached the peak of your artistic mountain? I think if any artist tells you that they have plateaued out, then they have for certain lost their way, I would say. You know, because art in um, becoming an artist is a forever process. You know, 
know, there's always something to be learned along the way, whether it's about art itself or you as an artist or as a person. And I get emotional just talking about it because it's such a um, it's such a grand challenge, you know, to achieve the unachievable, and that's perfection. There's no perfection in art. There's always something to strive for, becoming a better artist. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. So I was thinking if one of your fellow prisoners came up and said, Sean, I really like what you do with your painting, what sort of advice would you give them? The first thing for any, anyone having the curiosity or the interest in painting and becoming an artist, you have to first conquer the fear of it. I think most people feel that, especially when they're comparing themselves to other artists who have already embarked on their own journey and developed and progressed and transformed into who they are, you have to overcome your fear of failing and not becoming this idea you have of what an artist or a good painter is. And you have to find the courage to just be expressive in your own way. And being able to enjoy that that, that process, that journey that uh, it will take you on. There's a lot of fear when it comes to wanting to do something because you think you will fail at it and you won't be as good as you think you should be or could be. So you have to just overcome those fears and give yourself to the process and have fun along the way. I think there is room and space to talk about the, the, the power of art and the impact that art has, you know, not just on the artist's life, but those who receive the art that the artist produces. So, yeah. So, as you can hear in Sean's voice, he's a very genuine and gentle person. This is my first interview with Sean, and I hope it has interested you, interested you enough to look out for my next interview with him. By the way, my name is Swithin. I'm English, though I returned to Spain some four years ago now. In my next interview with Sean, as well as getting him to expand on his own artwork, I'll tell you a little bit about how I first came to hear about his work some ten years ago now. Thank you very much.